I gotta locate this podcast energy. I think it's your wine in your wine glass. It's in my wine glass. Hold on. Hmm. Yeah, it smells like podcast. <laughs> Hello! 欢迎来到 Mandarin Slang Guide, MSG, the Chinese learning podcast that tastes great and probably isn't all that bad for you. I'm Josh Ogden Davis, bringing you some words and perspectives that aren't in your textbook. Welcome back to the show, folks. I'm here again with the illustrious Frankie Huang. How are you, Frankie? I'm great. Thanks for um, having me back on the show again. I should say thank you, actually, because I'm sort of traveling all over America for random reasons. I was passing within shooting range of Frankie, and so she invited me to come over and hang out for a bit, and even more generously suggested that we do an episode of MSG. So thank you for making this happen. How long did you drive to get here? I drove over from Poughkeepsie, so it took about three hours to get out here. But it's worth it. If you follow Frankie on Twitter, you saw the balds she made. And uh, worth every mile. Worth every minute on the road. So when we were talking about what to talk about today, you mentioned that we could talk about ideas of awareness or wokeness. Why did that idea occur to you? It's just something that's on my mind a lot these days. Not necessarily the word wokeness, but sort of what it stands for. Uh, within the American context, for, for people who are unfamiliar, woke comes from AAVE, American, African-American vernacular English. English. There yeah. we go. And it's like many words from AAVE, the, the grammar is not standard, but it refers to, you know, being aware of what the world is really like. And I think this has been a year that really showed me how differently people view the world depending on who they are. And, you know, a lot of people are, figuratively speaking, asleep. You know, linguistically, it's also really interesting because woke is a word that exists sort of within that American ecosystem. So when you try to take this word out of America, it doesn't quite make sense, even though it has, it's, it's become a word that's relevant to the world by way of uh, the U.S. influencing the way the rest of the world functions. So I thought it would be an interesting word to talk about. I love it. And you mentioned something that is really interesting and sort of gets at the core of this topic. You said that AAVE is often not standard grammar. That's not to say that it doesn't have grammar. That's a big misconception about AAVE. It has its, it has its own grammar. Absolutely. So what's the standard grammar and what's non-standard grammar? It's decided by... The gatekeepers of language. Exactly. The gatekeepers of language, like whoever's grading your papers when you're in school in America or in China, whoever is deciding what is Putonghua and what is a Fang Yan. Absolutely. While each of these Fang Yan, or even if they're not Sinaitic languages, completely different languages inside of China, which one gets to be used as a standard language and which one gets to be called non-standard is an entirely political decision. It's true. Have, do you remember when the government attempted to standardize La La? as the official way to refer to your maternal grandmother. And people in southern China flipped out because hmm. la lao is very much a northern word. And in the south, you know, people say things like apo or mm. wai po. Yeah, wai po is what um, I learned. And honestly, you know, the idea of the government stepping in to tell people how to refer to their grandmother is ludicrous. But right. I think that's just one of the many examples we see the attempt to standardize language as an attempt to control the narrative. Absolutely. And uh, when I flatter myself, I like to think that Mandarin Slang Guide is sort of a, an attempt to highlight parts of the language that don't get taught in class, but that you're going to hear, that you're going to interact with. Because these words, they're called slang, and that somehow is almost like a like a slur on the words. Like, these are not standard words. These are substandard words These in a are way. fun words. These are fun words. Yeah. But um <laughs> but yeah, I, I I think that no one should be penalized or looked down upon because they're speaking in the way their parents spoke or because they're speaking in the way that the people around them were speaking when they grew up. Because mm -hmm. there's like I grew up in a household where people were very self consciously speaking correct English. Both my parents, my dad was a lawyer, my mom's a professor. So it's sort of a habit for them. But if I what's to say my experience is more valid than someone else who grew up in a household that had a different dialect or that was speaking AAVE or speaking something else. There's no way to say that mine is good and yours is not good. 
So I hope to in the future, and this is a reveal, I would love to do different shows on different fang yan, different dialects or different languages within China. To sort of open up to some of the differences between these. But that day is not this day. Because on this day, we are in writer, artist, recently interviewed a lot on podcasts and public radio about Mulan, Frankie Huang's new home in New England, talking about ideas of, of wokeness and awareness. So you mentioned that wokeness doesn't exist in Chinese culture. It's pretty much just sort of like an American idea. But if someone was going to use Chinese to talk about or refer to this American concept of woke, what word would they be most likely to use? So based on my very cursory Google research, um, it seems to be 觉悟. 觉悟. What's this 觉悟? Break this down for me. 觉悟 is not a slang. It's a it's a very standard. There we go again. Standard. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a it's a common word in Chinese that refers to sort of ascending to a higher awareness of how things are, and it's connected to Buddhism and attaining a kind of enlightenment, sort of cutting through the bullshit and hmm. seeing the world for what it really is. Mm. Yeah, these two characters, jue wu, jue is the same jue as in jue de, to think or believe something about something. To, to perceive. Ah, unsurprisingly, your Mandarin's better than mine. Oh, and stop the, it. <laughs> and then wu is, I think, the character that an English speaker will be more likely to directly associate with enlightenment. Is that fair? Uh, yeah. It's the same wu in Sun Wukong. Ah, Sun Wukong, the monkey king. Yes. Wu Kong as in to perceive, to understand emptiness, to cut your ties with, you know, worldly crap. I don't think I'm talking about this correctly, but yeah. <laughs> it's fine with me. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful, enlightened word. Yeah. So if someone were to use jue wu in the standard way, what sort of sentence can we make with jue wu? How does this function in a sentence? Okay. So, 原来我不明白这些道理。yeah, so 原来, wo originally or before I Bumingbai did not understand Jia this or these Dali concepts or ideas. rationales, ideas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yuan Lai Wu Xia Dali. I didn't understand these ideas before. What was the second part? Xinzai Wa Jong Yu Jia Wu La. Xinzai now wo me. Zhong Yu finally have in English we would say understand like oh I get it but Wu has much more of like an opening up kind of feel exactly exactly so it sort of seems to emphasize the the breakthrough that you're making and because of the sort of spiritual tie to it you know there's a little bit of angel song in the background <laughs> would you say yeah so if you want to use this word make sure that you have hired a singer to stand behind you and go, ah, every time you say jie wu. Maybe not like that. Exactly like this. <laughs> DM me. My DMs are open. I'm available to be a jie wu singer. Get me up. 100 RMB per time. So that's jie wu. And how would, do you even know how someone would use this to talk about the American concept of wokeness? Like, what would that look like in a sense? Ooh, you know, I don't think people are ever going to use jie wu in a sentence the way woke is used in English mm. in America in particular. So I think in China, there will be conversations about wokeness in America. Mm. So jue wu will be used so people understand what it translates to. But most likely people will, in China, will probably just use the word woke. Ah. Right? The way um, cool uh, right. or party or <laughs> fans right. all just get their cha- a Chinese pronunciation. So maybe like woke will become, I don't know, woke or something. Maybe they could use wu, wuke. Or wuke. Oh my God. Why didn't <laughs> I think of this? Um, it's much more likely for woke to become, as as Josh just brilliantly came up with, like wuke, than, than for jue wu to become the word that gets used. Maybe, you know, when wokeness in China becomes a thing, people will, will say wuke. Maybe we're going to start a trend. Hey, you heard it here first. You're on the, the ground level. Start spreading it. Wu ke. Mm. Wu ke sounds like a person because a ke is like a person, right? Mm. Like a ke and the ke. Mm-hmm. So wu ke could be some a person. Or xia ke, right? Exactly. Xia ke, like mm. a martial artist. So wu ke is a, is a woke wuxia. Exactly. 
social justice warrior. My brain just exploded. <laughs> Oh my god. MSG. This not, is brilliant, actually. <laughs> do not operate heavy machinery while listening to MSG. Your brain might explode. Um, you heard it here first. Wuke. If you're a Wuke, you're a social justice warrior. Spread the word, I guess. This could get dangerous. We could avoid this. Okay, so that's sort of the core idea of awakening into understanding. Could be epitomized with Jue Wu. But there's another character that's more often used when talking about ideas of waking up, and that's Xing. And that can be used together with Wu as Xing Wu. What does Xing Wu mean? Um, Xing Wu, I feel like, is the more, you know, down to earth version of Jue Wu. Mm. More like, you know, waking up to awareness rather than, I don't know, Jue Wu just sounds more like you've gone to heaven. Your, your uh, or consciousness you, has changed. In or a way. It, it's like, you know, you're a Pokemon evolving to <laughs> your final form, right? So, so Xing Wu maybe is the, the first level of evolution you're just you're waking up but you're not flying you're not exactly. breathing fire mm -hmm. anyways like seeing i think is more closely tied to waking up from slumber or something else that's befuddling you or muddying up your senses so like if xing wu is a low level mundane level of coming into awareness and jue wu is more of a existential level of changing the self and coming into true awareness so like a charmander can Xing Wu into a Charmeleon. And then when it really achieves Jue Wu, then it becomes a Charizard. Oh, God. Frankie just took a really big drink of red wine. We day drink. We do. That's the only way we can do podcasts. Okay, so that's Xing Wu. How can we use Xing Wu in a sentence? Okay. Ah, okay. So, ta, zhe, he, here, or at this point, cai, only. So only now does he... What was the rest of it? Uh, from Chansi is deep thought. She's doing a thinker motion. Really, I mean, it's a waste not to make this a video show with all of Frankie's uh, glorious motions. So deep thought in. So uh, he only now from deep thought... Xing Wu is to awaken, and Guo Lai is just sort of like an uh, uh, preposition added on the end, sort of to, to emphasize. So he came to, yeah. Only now did he come to out of out of his deep thought. Okay, so that's Xing Wu, a lower level of revelation and an awareness than Jue Wu, more of a mundane level. So we can also use Xing to talk about someone being aware, and the word for that is. Probably, I think, uh, qingxing. So qingxing is not strictly speaking being aware, but to be very clear-headed. Ah, yeah. okay. Qing has a clear and uh, I think a connotation of freshness as well. Ooh. With the water radical, right? Right, yes, yeah, the water radical. and then Qing the, shui. Qing shui is clear, fresh water, glistening. So qingxing means that your mind is clear as fresh water. All right, Frankie nods in podcast. <laughs> so how would we use Qingxing? So in a sentence, I would say, I'm going to do another longish sentence. Excellent. Okay. Uh, this is advanced MSG because I didn't quite follow that. So I'm going to outsource it. Could you break that down for me? Okay. 虽然, despite, 她很疲倦, she is very exhausted. Hmm. 但是, but... So her mind, her awareness, Yiran is still Qingxing, clear-headed and aware and sharp. Okay, so even though she's exhausted, her mind is still fresh. You're staying up all night. You've drunk four Red Bulls. Um, you're, <laughs> you're tired, but you're very functional. Okay, Red Bull gives you Qingxing. Maybe not, not a great slogan. Mm. Okay, never mind. So, so far, we have Jue Wu which is an existential level of enlightenment and coming to understand. We have Xing Wu, which is a more mundane level of um, achieving awareness, possibly of your immediate surroundings. Then we have Qing Xing, which is to be clear-headed uh, or to be sharp on point. So with the next one, I think we're finally kind of getting into what I consider slang territory, even though it's not really slang. And it's Xing Jiu. What is Xing Jiu? Xing Jiu is to wake up from alcohol or to sober up. 
Yeah. So to wake up from the from the alcohol, to wake up from the drunkenness, is to xing jiu. How would we use xing jiu in a sentence? 据说喝咖啡可以醒酒。<laughs> 据说喝咖啡可以醒酒。说，据说 ，it is said allegedly. Allegedly, excellent. Your English is better than mine too. I'm very upset about this. 喝咖啡 drink coffee or drinking coffee, 可以 can 醒酒 wake you up from alcohol. So allegedly, drinking coffee can sober you up. Is that true? No. <laughs> okay, hence the ju shuo. So that's xing jiu. I just think it's a really useful word to know because、mm. if you're going to socialize with friends while eating random food on a street corner, you're gonna get drunk. And、mm. I think conversations about sobering up, you know, is something that you're going to have, and you need the vocabulary to do it effectively. Yeah, like、uh, a sentence that comes to mind for me is 不让他开车，他还没醒酒。I should correct you that in in that sentence you would say it a little bit differently. Oh, so 不要让他开车，他的酒还没有醒。Ah, okay. Such as the um, I can't really explain, you know, why it needs to be this way. But if you want to sound like you're speaking Chinese in a more standard、oh, no. manner, I mean, the thing is, Chinese is very fluid and. To me, you know, getting your point across is like the key directive、mm. of you know saying things the way you say them, and the way that Josh said it was perfectly understandable.、Mm. But I would say that in order to sound more colloquial, you would say 他的酒还没有醒 Okay, so let's break that down. So 不要让他开车，不要 or you should not 让他 let that person 开车 drive a car. 他的酒 so their alcohol, 还没有醒 still has not awoken. So don't let this person drive. They have not sobered up yet. Excellent. Yeah, and that's interesting because I've probably said 他还没醒酒 probably said that a million times. Well, not a million.、Um, I probably said that a lot of times, but no one ever corrects me because they get what I'm saying. But if you want to be one step ahead, if you want to evolve further in Your use of Chinese. Yes, if you want to、uh, sing Wu into a Charmander, a Charizard. Sing Wu is into Charmeleon. Oh God! And then Jue Wu. Get it right, Frankie. <laughs> This is important. <laughs> it's not. It's really not. Sorry. It's, it's not. Then we we have one more word in here, which is a little bit different from the other Xing words, but it's fascinating, and we agree on this. What's the last word? So the last word is Xing Mu, which if you Take the characters apart and translate them individually, as I do occasionally with my、uh, Putong words Twitter mini column. It's to wake up the eyes,、mm -hmm. uh, and the English translation for this word would be it's an adjective, and it means that something is very eye catching. Yeah, so xing mu literally awaken, wake up, and then mu is the word for eye. So awaken the eyes, be eye catching. I love that. Because it's very vivid, I often feel like if I was just sort of not really paying attention and sort of floating through the day, and then something really catches my eye, it does feel like waking up through the eyes. It's fantastic. So a sentence you can use with 醒目 would be 这个海报上的字体非常醒目这个海报上的字体非常醒目 What does that mean? Break it down for me. 这个海报上 this poster, uh, 上的 so the What's on the poster? 字体、mm -hmm. typeface or font.、Mm -hmm. uh, the font on this poster, 非常醒目 is、mm -hmm. very eye catching or eye awakening. Okay, so that's 醒目 What else can be 醒目 aside from fonts? 字体 Um, colors. Ah, 这个颜色很醒目非常醒目 I think it's because of the the four character cadence. Um, 非常醒目 sounds、ah. nicer than 很醒目 Ah, would you say? I understand that my command of Chinese is not、uh, advanced enough that my instinct as to what sounds good、mm. is probably not going to map on super well onto、mm -hmm. what a Chinese person's instinct of what sounds good. And of course, even within native speakers, their idea of what sounds good can vary as well. I think a lot of times I am drawn to assembling like a even number of characters when I'm describing something. Um, you know, not everything is going to be a Chinese, but、um, like 非常醒目 
you know, it feels like Cheng Yu. When you said it that time, I realized that it's, it's sort of a rare unicorn in the Chinese language, which it's four characters, the four tones in order. Fei, Chang, Xing, Mu. That's the, right. The only other one I know is Sangguo Yan Yi. <laughs> Romance of the Three Kingdoms. <laughs> this is this is the level at which I engage with Mandarin. So I should definitely not be leading a Mandarin teaching podcast. But... Well, you are a musician, so it kind of makes yeah, sense to me. I have a major in music. I, I I would argue I'm less of a musician than I used to be. But that's beside the point. Fei Chang Xing Mu. Can we sing anything else like Singer? Waking your ears? Is that a thing? You know, I was thinking about that before, but the only organ you can wake up, well, that's not true, but there's only a word for um, eye awakening. I, I don't know of any other body parts being awoken the same way. Okay. Grammatically speaking, anyways. Grammatically speaking, anyways. Okay, excellent. So th- those are our uh, words having to do with waking up or awareness or wokeness. So now it's time for this person who doesn't speak Chinese super well to test the person who does speak Chinese super well. And if you don't pass, there's no consequence. It's just it's just me making stuff up. Okay, so if I want to say someone has sobered up, I will say that they... 他们的酒醒了. So their alcohol <laughs> is awakened. They have woken up. Okay, now if I want to say that someone is clear-headed and sharp, I would say that they are 很清醒. 很清醒. Can I say 非常清醒? Sure. <laughs> okay, I have the stamp of approval for that one. Uh, if I want to say that something is very eye-catching, it sort of awakens the eyes, that is 非常醒目. 非常醒目. 非常optional, but definitely 醒目. Okay, if I have a Charmander that evolves into a Charmeleon, which is to say, if I have a sort of a mundane day-to-day level sort of coming into awareness of something or sort of suddenly beginning to pay attention to what's around me, what's that called? Xing Wu. Xing Wu. Yeah. And the last one, if I have a sort of identity changing, awareness altering sort of revelation, that would be a... Uh, jue Wu. Jue Wu. This is when you get rid of all your earthly possessions, shave off all of your hair and, mm. you know, become a monk. Yeah, achieving Maybe. enlightenment, more or less. All right, well, thank you very much for talking to me today, Frankie. Thanks for the visit. No, oh, it's my pleasure to be here. Aww. That's all the MSG we have for you today. If you want more, or if you want flashcards, or treats, or something, I guess, follow us on Twitter at MSG Mandarin, or on Facebook and WeChat as MSG Podcast, all one word. Thanks again to Frankie for being a wonderful repeat guest, and a very special thank you this week goes out to Charmander, because fire attacks are super effective against bad tones. Who knew? And last but not least, thank you to you, the listener, for listening. I love it when you listen to this podcast. New episode in two weeks, for real this time. And for now, 再见, 再会, 再聊. Bye-bye. A Charmander can xing wu into a Charmeleon. Then when he really achieves jue wu, when he really jue wu's, he becomes a Charmander. Charizard. Do it over. This is my fourth try at a Pokemon reference. Take four.